This is the loudspeaker that is the ultimate expression of Dave Wilson's design philosophy. Its purpose is simple. I have basically one goal, and that is a facsimile reproduction of the emotionally charged sound that I hear in real acoustical music. It's a, it's a daunting task. It's an Olympian ideal. Dave understands that better than anyone I know. That is not music. That's a loudspeaker. It's a bunch of stuff that's put together. And yet, if we've done our job right, it sounds almost eerily like, the, like real music. Dave has long felt there is no better laboratory for understanding the sound of live music than the great concert halls of Europe, which he visits on an annual basis. Yeah, I'll go into a musical performance, usually rehearsals, because with rehearsals I can get close. I can get really close into the performers. And, uh, and, and I'll just listen with my eyes closed, and then I'll hear something that I didn't expect to hear. It's kind of like Alexander Fleming finding this thing on his Petri dish in London, and uh, I didn't want to see that mold on my Petri dish. And then he thought, why? Why is it that where that mold is, the bacteria don't grow? But he asked the question, why? And um, I think that that's a large part of being successful in observing things. Simply ask why and have an open mind. From his very earliest days as a hobbyist, Dave has been transfixed by the question, why don't loudspeakers sound more like live, unamplified music? The Alexandria XLF project was launched as the most unrestrained effort to date to close the distance between live and reproduced sound. And so he's become detail obsessed. Uh, down to the solder that's being used, uh, down to the metallurgy of, of the, the heat sinks. You can measure, you can do all kinds of measurements and everything, but it's literally a religious act of faith to just assume that because you know the metallurgy, you know the chemistry of it, that something is going to sound more accurate than something else. He realizes that there is no measurement that we can use that will yield the answer to the question, will this product sound more like the live event? Despite the obvious fact that a loudspeaker will ultimately be judged by how it sounds, many designers instinctively devalue listening as an objective design tool. Instead, some will seek the safe ground of theory in the belief that the application of correct engineering principles will reliably produce a good sounding result. Still others insist on the primacy of measurements. If it measures correctly, then it must sound good. Painstaking and detailed measurements, using the most sophisticated instruments available, are part of the everyday research effort at Wilson Audio. But rather than being the final arbiter of a design choice, measurements provide a starting point, a hypothesis to test. Such was the process surrounding the development of the XLF's Convergent Synergy Tweeter. Dave closely followed the advent of new tweeter technology, boasting exotic materials like diamond and beryllium as they found their way into speaker designs during the last decade. We've listened to different tweeters. I mean, not only from a business standpoint, but we're just curious about it. And, um, and some of these are really outstanding tweeters. And you'd think right off the bat, due to it, their bandwidth, their frequency response, that they should be just shoo-ins. You can take a tweeter and just listen to the tweeter on a baffle, and uh, regardless of its measurements, you can tell uh, pretty quickly if that's a team member you want to work with or not. And we've rejected them one by one. What listening revealed was that, despite the allure of the designs and the impressive measurements, in the context of the Alexandria platform, they failed to help close the gap between real and reproduced music. So he set out to design his own tweeter. 
Maybe other designers would think, well, you know, a silk dome, that's kind of old school. Um, it doesn't have the romance. It doesn't have the, the exotic appeal. We have uh, actually gained in dynamic contrast, and we've gained in harmonic uh, expression relative to our prior design. I think one of the key elements to Dave's success is this notion of, of observation trumping the theory. Yet another instance of observation trumping theory lay behind the innovation of the cross-load firing port system in the XLF. The observation was that in certain kinds of rooms, Alexandria sounded lean in the deep bass, despite its measured 18 hertz response. It occurred to me that uh, we should offer uh, the choice between front or rear firing ports as yet another way uh, in this grand complication that we call an Alexandria uh, to fine tune that system for any room that you choose. Every development that is part of Alexandria XLF came about as a result of asking why and listening. Yet for all its complexity and the obsessive attention to every detail of its design, the overarching mandate Dave established for himself was to never lose sight of the end result. As long as you follow that course of integrating together with the sole idea of looking at the result rather than being a technician that's just looking at the elements that go into it, the more you refine that art, I think the more profound the product is that comes out over the years.